you know, you have like a, a sliver of someone's attention. And so how are you going to hook them? Then how are you going to deliver that value to them? And then what's the call to action at the end? Where can they learn more? Where can they reach out to you? It's providing value more than anything and respecting people's time. But know that with content creation, you're not going to become famous right away. Blake, I had the opportunity to have you at our home here in San Diego uh, just a few weeks ago when you were instrumental in helping me launch this brand and build the website. And we had lots of fun together. Um, some of the, the key points that I remember, and you always do this for me, Blake, you always are challenging me to get outside my comfort zone and think about things differently. And you do it in such a tactful way. Um, it helps me be really receptive to the idea. One of those ideas, and I initially, I think like anytime when someone's challenged, I know for me personally, I get resistant initially. We all do. And, yeah. <laughs> and you had said something to me like, you know, Tracy, you really need to focus on creating content and sharing content. And I think I probably said something like, well, I can't do that because I don't have enough time to do it. There's no way I can invest my time creating content. I need to be, you know, finding people to join me. Um, and you were able to quickly convince me about the importance of creating content and what the value to me and my industry would be. Would you just share with others uh, your thoughts on that? Today, I firmly believe people, not even in business world, anyone that wants to show up online, uh, people will not know about you or what your company stands for unless you're creating content. We're all looking at our phones. We look at our phones more than our desktop computers. And so we're looking and looking for content, right? It, co content has become the currency of the internet. And so I remember just pushing you to think more like a content creator and sharing your, your thoughts and your insights and learning along the way, but also sharing your, your teachings. Uh, no one needs to come across as the expert. No one knows everything. But when you're learning, why not share what you're learning with people, right? And that's what good content creators do. They're able to inspire. They're able to educate. Um, and that type of thing, that, uh, that approach, I think, needs to be um, taken on seriously because content's not going to be going away. Um, and there's ways that you can go about it so that you're not spending too much time on it. Um, even like right now, we're doing a podcast virtually, okay? We can break down this podcast into different bites of content for people. People don't necessarily always have time for um, a 30-minute podcast to listen to or watch. So there's ways that we can break down this podcast into blog post articles, uh, LinkedIn posts, lists that people can download as a PDF. I think it's super important to think more like a publisher these days. Um, think about what you're putting out there in the world and just constantly create it. Um, there's no such thing as like magazines or newspapers that are solely doing that anymore. What people like the New York Times and publications have done, they've adapted their ways of working. Um, they are pushing out content and then teasing that content back to their site. Um, so if we think about things like that, I think it'll be hugely important in this industry to think more like a publisher. And I think one of the other things you shared with me, Blake, I think when I was originally in that, and I, I, I don't resist, I don't resist too much with you because you've proven that your ideas are really good. So I, I now I know my, my arc, right? Resist and then accept and then get, you know what I mean? Well, and that's resistance is, is part of the process, right? Of innovating. It shouldn't feel safe. If it feels safe, you're not innovating. That's true. That's my perspective. One of the reasons why I initially was nervous um, about content creation was that I don't have all the answers, right? I have my experience and my experience is different than somebody else's experience. So what is it that makes me an expert and why should I share my content? I think you helped me navigate that as well by saying things like, you know, just get it out there. Your experience is worthwhile. You don't have to be the smartest person in the room. You know, can you talk more about that? First and foremost, I would say this is a game of patience. This is not gonna, you're not gonna start off being an influencer right away. 
So I would not look necessarily at the metrics as a KPI for how you're doing. Uh, what I would what I would really look into is consistency at first. Um, there's a, a rule of thumb that maybe post three types of content a day on a platform, specifically like on Instagram or um, Facebook. They say that um, for something like LinkedIn, there's so much stuff you can do. I, and I would recommend looking at who you follow, asking yourself and reverse engineering, why do I like this? Why, why am I drawn to that person? And there's no shame in replicating their model. You don't have to copy everything that they're doing, but copy what you think you can take into, into who you are and why you exist. Um, why were you put here on earth? And what, what really like fulfills you in business or your life? In general, you know, I think there's a shift as well, not to get too off topic, but um, with the pandemic, I think we've learned life is more than business. And I think um, marketers are really good at like understanding that person too and having more of like a casual um, approach to like getting to know people and using that in business. And so I think like, let's just think about what do you personally like to, to in, ingest when you're on social media? Um, and then take those top tips from people that are killing it and use it in different ways. And te- it's an experimentation model as well. So you might starting out really suck and that's just part of it. Then eventually it's, it's gonna take off if you are consistent with that content and if you're being valuable with these people's time. Because more than anything, attention is being competing, it's competed everywhere with all types of media today. Um, I think it's something like 10,000 ads that the average person sees a day. So if you think about it like that, um, it's almost like an elevator pitch, you know? And so you you have like a a sliver of someone's attention. And so how are you gonna hook them? Then how are you gonna deliver that value to them? It could be like step one or tip one, two and three. And then what's the call to action at the end? Where can they learn more? Where can they reach out to you? And then, yeah, just kind of ongoing conversation and just providing value more than anything and respecting people's time. But know that with content creation, you're not gonna become famous right away. You gotta, you gotta continue producing content. One of my initial pieces of resistance was that I don't wanna be working more. I want to design my life so I can have a higher impact with less time. So when you started to encourage me to create content, I initially saw it as like additional hours that I was going to have to take away from my family and um, things that fill me up to do curation, creation of content. But what I learned throughout our discussion is that, you know, I, and after writing a first, my first couple of blog posts, it's given me energy because I'm sharing, I don't, I'm not, I'm not making myself feel like I have to be an expert. I'm just saying, this is my experience. This is my life experience. And it's actually quite therapeutic to be able to write write that and share it. So it's it's allowed me to take that pressure off and just have it be more of a holistic part of what I'm doing as a person. And I would give you two additional tips just to kind of piggyback on what you said. One, don't care about what other people think. People are way too concerned with, oh my gosh, this person comments this and no one's liking my stuff. Who cares? The good content creators out there that I'm talking millions of followers now, they've been doing this for a long time. And there has come a point where they've had to stop caring about the the haters, frankly. Um, Another tip I would say, and this is huge, in terms of time management, yeah, make it a habit, but there's also ways to batch content. So you might have maybe a 30 minute block of free time. You might have one hour and you might have two hours. So break that down, whatever time you spend, there's there's so much opportunity in that content that you produce in that amount of time to break it down into these small pieces. Because if you think about it, yeah, long form content works for some people, but then what about the people that have those, they don't have enough time to, to energy to look at what, you know, this whole blog post article that might be 5,000 words long. In that 5,000 word piece of content on your website, you might be able to have 10 mini posts that you can write and then drive people back to your site. I try to get to um, this little hidden beach with my dog at least a couple of times a week. And I've just been bringing my journal with um, and trying to just 
you know, get thoughts down when I'm there. And then when I come back, try to piece it together again. Um, I think all, any tips to be able to create one big piece of content when you're energized and when you're in the mood and you have the, um, the experience is kind of hot and then break that down. That's really going to save people time. And I think it's a really good, strong tip. And there's no um, tried or true method of this. It, it depends on the person. I would recommend to find what works for you. When I was first starting out as a photographer on Instagram, I wasn't getting tons of likes. I had truly enjoyed doing it. And that's why I did it. If you're not creating stuff that you thoroughly enjoy, yeah. why are you doing it? Then it's a job. And then it's, and that's what my initial reaction and my in initial resistance was for, like from, I thought, oh, you know, but you helped me reframe that to, well, what would I enjoy doing, you know? And how can I share that with other people to help make their life easier? And so that they don't have to go through the same challenges that I went through. It's a different approach and a different frame that makes it more fulfilling. Yeah, just inspire people, just be yourself. And just, you know, it goes back to the question, why are you here on Earth? Um, and just use that as your North Star. Blake, thank you so much for being here with me today. Uh, you have been instrumental in helping me build this brand, uh, taking me from my mom's company of design for learning and helping me transform into a company that I believe in and I feel is fulfilling my purpose. And thank you for joining me here and sharing your insights with the broader L and D community. I feel like, I believe that this is going to be very beneficial. Um, if people would like to learn more about you and, um, work with you in the future, where would they find you? You can find me on LinkedIn just by searching my name, Blake Pleasant, or you can reach me by email at hello at blakepleasant.com. And I'm also going to be serving as a subject matter expert on Tracy's new business called Sea Change Collective. And so you can reach her there at seachangecollective.com. Thank you, Blake. I appreciate your time today. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks, Tracy. Always good to talk to you.